Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you live here to talk about July 6th, uh, four game LCK LPL slate, League of Legends. Uh, it's a very exciting slate, I think. Um, there are a lot of curveballs being thrown in terms of uh, starting lineups and potential uh, substitution risks. We have a lot to go over. So, yeah, let's dive in. We had a really good day yesterday, rather this morning. Um, we call that anyone's legend upset for those of you who watched that video. Um, so yeah, stay tuned uh, for those videos uh, that are coming up. So, all right. So two games in China, two games in Korea, uh, two games, uh, FPX versus LGD, Victory 5 versus Rare Atom, uh, two sizable favorites in FPX and Victory 5 respectively. Um, I just want to go over some starting lineups because we do have some uh, new starters. Summit uh, for FPX is starting in the top lane. He played in the last two games of uh, the two the last two games of the last series. I know Xiaoliao who started that series in game one, but they lost, and they brought in uh, Summit uh, for for game two and three, and they ended up winning that series. And as you guys know, I mean, like FPX was at the bottom of the standings, but then you see their match history um, and you see that they had played against some really elite teams like EDG, TES, RNG, so, and JDG, and they beat JDG with Summit at the top lane. So I do think Summit fits well for FPX, but, you know, it's too early to tell. I think that's such a small sample size when he played or subbed in and played two games. I think it's a little different when a team knows that Summit is starting and, you know, prepares against that uh, lineup because I think JDG had expected uh, Shelly Ahu, probably prepped for Shelly Ahu starting and playing, um, you know, for the, rest, for, that, for the rest of that series uh, against FPX. So I do think um, LGD, um, you know, now has some samples uh, of Summit playing with FPX um, and analyze that. Um, I'm sure the coaches... Uh, for LGD have, have done that, you know, uh, analysis, but LGD is also starting, on the other hand, is starting Kui at jungle, um, EG is starting in the mid lane still, and then Chelizzi uh, is starting over Fearness um, in the top lane. LGD has been such a, I would, I wouldn't even say up and down team, they've just been pretty bad overall, I think. Um, I know Shadow as actually was actually, I mean, just like any other split previously, Shadow at Jungle has been probably the lone bright spot for LGD. Um, coming over from LEC from you know Mad Lions, Shadow has been really a good player, I think, in the LPL so far. It's just that he is just playing with shitty teammates. Um, that's unfortunate. But now he's gone, and well, he's not gone, but he's getting benched, and now Kui is starting. And I remember from the last split, Kui started some games over Shadow, and that really did not pan well for LGD. So I do not expect anything to be anything else to be different here. I expect that to be the same. Um, but overall, even just without that jungle difference there i think um well Clid has been playing well for fpx so I, I do think he will you know match well against kui and then in the top lane summit i'm sure he will do okay um against shelly z shelly z is not bad i mean you know he's a serviceable top laner in the lpl i think and then in the mid lane is where i <clears throat> am you know scratching my head a little bit and also in the bottom lane so yeah, I mean, I think FPX should win this matchup, um, but um, I do think it will throw a wrench in the starting lineup here by starting Summit for FPX. So I don't know how much game scrim plays uh, FPX has um, has played so far with Summit, you know, in the top lane, you know, instead of Xiaoliaohu. So I don't know how that's going to pan out. So I do think there's a little bit of risk there that maybe FPX not gelling well with Summit in the top lane now. Um, but at the end of the day, LGD has been pretty bad. And I think Shadow is a better jungler than Kui. So maybe, you know, FPX will just roll, roll over them. I don't know. That's my expectation, I think. I think my prediction ultimately is going to be FPX winning the series to 
two to zero, probably. The next matchup is F, uh, Victory Five versus Rare Adam. Uh, rookie is finally back. Um, he's starting over Dream, and Dream has been really, really good for Victory Five. So I'm sure he'll get a spot somewhere else um, so for some other team. But Vic Victory Five is undefeated in the LPL. They're at the top of the standings in the first place. And thanks to a lot uh, good plays by Rich in the top lane, solid play, solid presence. Um, going up against Cube, I think Rich, I like Rich better. And then XLB is starting at Jungle today over Carsa. XLB has been starting here and there as well for Victory 5 throughout the split here. Uh, so it's nothing like completely new, but still, I prefer Carsa over XLB. But, you know, Rookie coming back, XLB coming back here uh, to start with Rookie in his first series in the LPL for the summer split. Um, I do think that's going to be fine. I mean, Rare Adam has been so bad. And Votic and PP, PP God, before I go on to Rare Adam, Votic and PP God have been playing very well too. So Rare Adam, on the other hand, has been playing horribly. Uh, they've probably been the most disappointing team, in my opinion, in the LPL. Um, I know in the last or in the previous splits, the Rare Adam has always been, had always been around the mid, you know, mid-tier, top-tier team. Uh, but I think this patch and this meta has thrown them off uh, very much. Like I think Iboy and Yuyanja have been such a liability for that team. They still try to, uh, you know, farm and scale until the late game where I think the mat, uh, the, the meta and the patch right now favors heavily favors more aggressive 80 carries, because I think it's very important to secure objectives early game and putting map pressure to secure those objectives and, you know, and actually, you know, be part of that skirmish to gain the lead early game. I think that's a very important aspect of the current meta. And I don't think Iboy and Yuyanja have that going. So really, I mean, for Rare Adam to win, it has to come from the top half of the map, Cube, Leanne, and Strive. Leanne actually has decent stats um, on how much jungle that he's controlling. Uh, statistically, I've mentioned that before. But I think Victory 5 overall has such a, you know, such a better team. Um, I think even if Rare Adam takes a game, I think Victory 5 should win the series. So I'm predicting Victory 5 to win 2-1. to one. I think just given that Rookie is coming back and I, maybe they're not gelling well together uh, at first game back. So maybe 2-1. to one. But I think at the end of the day, I think Victory 5 should pull this off as well. I know it's kind of boring takes today uh, for, for LPL, like both favorites winning. But... If I were to pick an underdog, yeah, I mean, it's going to be LGD with, um, yeah, I just do not believe in Iboy and Yuyanja to do well against Victory 5. So I think it has to be LGD. I mean, maybe Kui has shown some very vast improvements over the offseason between, I mean, not offseason, but between the summer and spring, spring splits. And I've seen Awesome and Jin Zhao play pretty well at times. I think their ceiling is pretty high. And I know LWX and Hang have struggled a little bit um, early in the split playing against those elite teams. So, I mean, it could happen. I think I, I like LGD as a deep GPP play if I were to, uh, you know, make a GPP play in the LPL matchups. And the LCK is a little more simple, I think. I'm going to have to go start with the KDF versus Bro. Um, KDF, there's a little bit of news there at Keen. LM, uh, so their top laner, their jungler, and their support and Hoyt, um, they all have COVID, so they're playing remotely. So only, the, it's funny because only three of those players who have COVID are playing remotely, whereas the other two players, Fate and Teddy, are probably going to be playing in person on the stage, uh, using the microphone or whatever the communication program that they use. So. You know, it's, I feel like that's such a big um, setback, I think, potential setback. I mean, you know, I know for some of you guys who play League of Legends and for those of you who've been watching the esports scene, it, it's a grind. I mean, it's a grind for these, uh, um, you know, uh, players. It's a grind for coaches. It's a grind for the organization to stay focused and stay healthy um you know especially give like throughout us throughout a series i mean best of three you have to have you know you know the the very focus that you need to have throughout the you know each part of the game every single minute of it um and i do think having covid and 
being sick in general. I mean, I think that's going to definitely be a distraction for those players who have it. And also the communication wise, I mean, against uh, Fred and Brian, you know, like if, if these, all the, all of these players played on the stage, I mean, I would hands down pick Kwangdong freaks right away. Uh, over Fred Brian because Fred Brian has been the worst team in the LCK so far. Um, they've been swapping a lot of the players and trying new things, start new roster construction and blah, blah, blah to kind of get them going, but it still hasn't worked out. Um, like today, for example, I know they called up Gaiman, Gaman. Um, so there's a good chance that he will either start or sub in, get subbed in over Henna. So just letting you guys know that could happen, but they, he was just called up um, before this week started. So there's a decent chance. And Fred and Brian, um, he, they gave up so, so uh, they give up so few deaths and kills. I I'm probably going to avoid this matchup completely. And Kwang don't freaks. Like I said, some players having COVID, maybe they will have a letdown game here and maybe, maybe Fred and Brian will have their first win of the split. So really, I'm just staying away from this matchup for, for, for uh, DFS purposes. And then in, in the second matchup of the LCK, it's Nongshin versus KT. I just have a very good feeling after watching the last game for KT. I know KT played really, really well, in my opinion. Uh, I, for other reasons, too, that I'm, I'm just going to have to... Pre- I'm predicting KT to win this matchup. I think Nongshin could be a sexy pick to make, stack to play with. Um, along with like let's say like one other LPL team or something like that um, you know jamming in the favorite but I just feel like KT should win this matchup I mean just given that Ghost and Effort have struggled and Aiming and Life have been playing well and now with Vikla in the mid lane I think he's been he's been starting so there's a good chance Arya could come back and start here as well but Vikla when he plays he's played really well um, both Arya and Vikla I mean I like both of them this split so far um, but at the end of the day, I think Vikla, since they won the last series, I think Vikla should start, is expected to start, at least for me. And then Rascal has been, you know, hands down, solid. Like, very, very solid in the top lane. But he has a tough matchup against Kana today. And then Cuz has played well. I mean, he was the reason why they struggle in the uh, spring split. But overall, KT has shown me that they are, they do belong in the top four or five um, teams, I think, in the LCK. But if you are stacking Nongshim, yeah, I mean, I think um, I just feel like Ghost and Effort have struggled a lot. And I think they're going to have a hard time against Aiming and Life, in my opinion. And then BDD has not been his best. Um, and then I think this is the top half of the lineup that needs to win this matchup, I think. Um, Kana and Dread have to carry that team, I think, if they want to, if they have it, if they want to have a chance to win. But at the end of the day, I like KT, how they showed. I mean, their form is great right now. I like I like how they've been playing. And I, like I said, I, what, what I said, talk about when I talked about Aibo and Yuyanja for Rare Adam, how they cannot carry the team or they, their playing style, play style is bad. I feel the same way about Ghost and Effort at times um, here in the split. The split. So I do think um, Aiming and Life should, should win that matchup in my opinion. So yeah, so I have FPX winning, V5 winning, KT winning, and then... Kwangdong Freak should win, but I'm staying away from this matchup for DFS purposes. And for GPP, for underdogs, I mean, maybe LGD and then maybe Nongshim. That's about it, though, that I'm interested in. I'm not interested in Fred and Brian because they just don't score well, and they have a lot of substitution risks today, um, given that they called up Gaman here. So anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any other questions, let me know at DFS Chan. Um, I'll be available here probably in the next couple hours. Um, But otherwise, good luck out there. And if you like the video, please hit the like button um, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.